Salam brethren and welcome to Zion to Yahushua's temple we have not stopped telling you what Yahushua's temple stands for you see we are all churches once you believe in Christ and the Holy Ghost comes inside you you become a church now you can grow and by growing you can give birth to where many brethren come together you see so that's called the outer church the outer church is where we gather right now but that doesn't stop you from being the individual church many of you now because of the outer church you forget about being the individual church you are the church that means the works of christ takes place in you and out of you do you understand that okay so in this church right though many people believe and sometimes they have different opinions maybe due to their destination due to the environment or due to their understanding or lack of understanding or what knowledge is available to them or not available to them maybe due to the, you see if we're running somebody's faster than another person so maybe due to how slow they are in understanding things or due to how lazy they are in denying themselves for christ right this gives back to different variety of opinion but the bottom line is amongst this opinion there are also wrong opinions so if you're not watching and praying you can be a victim of the wrong opinion and when you're a victim of the wrong opinion you will be so stubborn that you don't want yourself to change you see you become blind somebody of a blind faith when the bible can no longer correct you and you believe you've arrived but the bible cannot be used in correcting you you my friend of a blind faith somebody say blind faith no different from a foolish virgin right so in Yahushua's temple the reason why they match church Yahushua's Ekal that is Yahushua's temple is because my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost case closed so Yahushua's work is taking place here and in this body we are trying to be like Christ Somebody say, in this house, we are trying to be like Christ. We are not like Christ, but we are trying to be like Him. So that means we are receiving information from Him, and we are running the race. And nothing, no one, can stop us from running the race. It can only kill us. So if you are thinking of stopping us, you are wasting your time. Because we are ready to die. You see what I am saying? If we are ready to die, we will be here. Understood? So therefore, our destination is no sin. Somebody say, our destination is no sin. That doesn't mean we are not with sin. That doesn't mean we are not walking out our salvation. That doesn't mean we are not fighting sin. That doesn't mean you will see your sin. It means our destination is no sin. That means we're going through the process. That means if the solution for no sin appears right now, we'll be without sin. And we all know that the master is going to give the solution because he has said it. And once he has said something, it is final. Somebody say, once he has said it, it is final. The master said to Cephas, Cephas, I'm going to suffer many things in Jerusalem and I'm going to die. And on the third day, I'm going to be resurrected. And Cephas was like, oh, far be it from you to die. And the master rebuked him. I say, get thee away from me, Satan, for you stumbling block to me. You do not love what? The things of Elohim. But you love the things of the flesh. I've told you that I'm going to die. Now you want to appeal to that sense of death. You see what I'm saying? But I've told you I'm going to rise again. You do not want to appeal to that. You see? So therefore, when I do die, and I do rise again, you're going to struggle believing it. Forgetting that I told you I'm going to die and I told you I'm going to rise again. So when the master says something is final, case closed. Is it Christ that said it? It is final. Down here. And Christ said, go and sin no more. So therefore, we are fighting to be set free to sin no more. So once we are not set free, well, you can see sins around us. That's because we're not free, we're fighting. But once we're set free, you will see anything around us. So that's what we believe out here. And there's nothing that can change us. Because that's the scriptures. 
Praise God. So therefore, anybody that believes any theology, any theory that makes it possible for you not to be delivered from any sin, any sin is not my bread. So you can call Christ all you like as long as you believe that you cannot be delivered from all sins. In this earth, you are not my brethren because you are contrary to the scriptures. For the scriptures do clearly say that El Shaddai is going to take us to the land and is going to clean us up and we should touch no unclean thing anymore. Do you understand that? That we should touch no unclean thing anymore. So when he has delivered us, we should touch no unclean thing anymore. So therefore, uncleanness will be dealt with. Do you understand that? So El Shaddai is taking us to a place of no sin. So anybody that believes that El Shaddai cannot take you to a place of no sin is not my brethren, it's not my brother, it's not my sister, it's not my mother, it's not my father, it's not my brother, it's not my, it's not my child, it's nothing. Yes, because that's what we do in this church. So the reason why I don't see us with members at the moment is because people believe that they should sin. People believe that Christ cannot deliver from all sins. So they hate us for what we believe. They hate us for fighting and waiting for Christ to take us to a place where we'll sin no more. That's why you see us with no brethren. Case closed. And then we have another reason why we don't, you don't see us with brethren. Some brethren believe that because you've repented, that you shouldn't sin anymore. So because they see us with sin, even though we are working out our salvation, they believe that we are practicing error. Now, those brethren will be right if they are not sinning. But the problem is that they are sinning. So what then are they doing? It's called hypocrisy. Ye shall be delivered to death by all those around you. I'll read all this part of scriptures for you. When you've repented, you shall be hated by all men for my name's sake. You shall be hated by brethren. You will be betrayed and they'll be delivering you to death. So the question is, what are those around you trying to deliver you to? Now that thing is called death and the master is life. So you're meant to fight that thing they're delivering you to with all your strength, with all your might, with all your heart because you know that your master is life. So that brings us to today's sermon. And the title of today's sermon is The Worship of Elohim. The Worship of Elohim. So listen to today's sermon and be blessed, be edified, and understand what we're saying and practice. In Yahushua's name, Amen. Before we start the sermon, let us pray. Heavenly Father, Ancient of days, your UA Seva Ut El Elyon Elohi Israel. Elohi Avraham. Father, I think you called yourself Elohi Avraham because Avraham did what, <laughs> what only you was going to do, what only you did for your children. That's of Abraham, Abraham was ready to crucify his son, not for material gain, not for wealth, not for anything, but because he told him to, and because he believed that when he does, you're going to raise up his son, for if you do not raise up his son anymore, how are you going to fulfill all the things, all the promises? You said you are going to fulfill through his son. How are you going to do that? So for this, whilst you are testing him, he tested you. Oh, Father, and I'm inferior because I know I will beg for you to take my life instead of, instead of killing my son for you to raise my son back up. So I'm inferior and I'm humble in thy presence and I say, Eloi, Abraham. For thou didst send the only begotten son, and you slain him. You did not stop. Though you stopped Abraham, you did not stop your hand. You allowed him to die. And then you did fulfill everything Abraham believed, which is he did raise him back up. For him to be the firstborn of many brethren. 
Father, your mystery is mind blowing. And I cannot stand away from your wisdom, from your knowledge. So help me to have retentive memory, to practice it in your Yeshua Mashatis, to also share to the brethren, those who want to know you, in the name of your Yeshua Mashiach Nazim. Father, forgive me for my sins, for I'm unclean. Forgive me for my sins. I cover myself with the blood of your Yeshua Mashiach Nazim. Father, thou have said that thou will take me to a land where I should touch no unclean thing anymore. Meaning, you're going to give me the power to touch no unclean thing anymore. And Father, I expect and I wait on you. And I keep fighting, waiting for you. And I know you're going to take me there. And you're going to take all those who believe there. To a place where we'll see no more, where we'll just be practicing thy word, enjoying thy word. Yes, sin and death shall be totally defeated. Father, I give you all the glory and I thank you for thy awesome power. Father, fill me with thy power, fill me with thy wisdom, thy knowledge, thy understanding to speak to the edification of the brethren and to my own edification as well. Speak through thy Holy Ghost, take not thy Holy Ghost away from me. I plead the blood of Yahushua Messiah Nazim for me and all those who believe. Father, help us not to be a victim of error. Cast out the spirit of error in the name of Yahushua Messiah Nazim. We cast out the spirit of lies in the name of Yahushua Messiah Nazim. We cast out the spirit of Satan, the beast, the Antichrist, and their host in the name of Yahushua Messiah Nazim. We cast out the spirit of death in the name of Yahushua Messiah Nazim. Father, Speak through me and bless all those who listen. And whatever we ask in the name of your Hushua Mashiach Nazim, with a honest heart today, Father, may it be done in the name of your Hushua Mashiach Nazim. Bless the same of your Hushua's name, I pray. Amen. So, back to our sermon today the worship of Elohim. We're actually going to start with a conversation Kephas had with the Master. So let's read the scriptures. Alright brethren, um, turn with me to the book of um, Matthew. I'm going to be reading from the book of Matthew chapter 16 from verse 21 to... I'm going to be reading from the book of Matthew chapter 16 from verse 21 to 23. It reads, From that time forth began Yahushua to show unto his disciples how that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Cephas took him and began to rebuke him saying, Be it far from thee, Adon, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Cephas, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offence unto me, for thou severest not the things that be of Elohim, but those that be of men. I want you to understand this very well. The Master said they're going to kill him, and that is going to rise again <laughs> on the third day. This is the same master that told him about Lazarus and resurrected Lazarus. <laughs> it's not saying. But now Cephas doesn't want the master to die. He rebukes the master that it will not happen. <laughs> that is opposing the glory of the master. The master is going to die and be resurrected. And Kepha is saying, that will not happen. <laughs> Do you understand that? That will not happen because he is only thinking about the death, the resurrection part. How can that? That's not possible. So he's thinking about the death. Now, do you believe that if he was thinking about the resurrection, so he's going to be like, wow, I love to see this. This is going to be glorious. Oh, this is what he said. But like I said, it takes us to be convicted by the Holy Ghost for us to know these things. Nevertheless, you see, they were Christ followers. 
You see what I'm saying? Following Christ doesn't make you perfect. It means you're walking it out. You're learning. You're practicing. To destination perfect. Somebody say to destination perfect. We had the cliffers finish. Destination perfect. That's what we do in your Kusho's temple. You see? So you must believe everything that comes out of the mouth of the master. For to believe a contradiction, a contradictory word to the master is to be in opposition to the master. And for such we call Satan. That's why I say you're not my brethren. You see? So you see, there was Satan there appealing to the flesh. So when people appeal to your flesh, they are Satan. It feels good. Somebody say it feels good. Oh, he loves me so much, he doesn't want me to die. That's what some of us are saying. But the master tells him, Satan! See what I'm saying? Because the master knows where that's coming from. That's the principle of Satan, the flesh. He loves not the glory of Elohim, but he loves the pleasure of the flesh. When you, my friend, compromise Elohim's glory for the pleasure of the flesh, you are becoming like Satan. And the master is, if you can hear the master, is rebuking Satan. But if you can't hear the master, you just be following Satan. So the worship of Elohim then has nothing to do with the pleasure of the flesh. The pleasure of the flesh is supposed to be a bonus. This is why the master, if you read on, this is why the master says you must deny yourself. You must be ready to die. He literally, if you read on, he literally tells you, see, if you cannot, if you're not ready to die for my glory, <laughs> then you're not my disciple. <laughs> see what I'm saying exactly. Do you get what I mean? You must be ready to die. And we are talking physical death here. We are talking spiritual death. It is not possible for a believer to die spiritually. For spiritually from the Holy Ghost, we are already living eternally. It is not possible. But if you practice the wrong things, just like my sermons have told you, you are going to die spiritually. For when you are contradictory to the Master, the King of Kings, in context, you are being an antichrist. And if you cannot be saved from it, if you cannot be corrected from it, if you cannot repent from it, you, my friend, are in danger of spiritual death. Do you understand that? So every death, death, death we are speaking about, we are talking about physical death. For spiritual death is separation from you and the Holy Ghost. That makes you no more a believer, so I don't understand. Right? Good. So, the denial of the flesh on its own, on its own already prepares you for physical death because you're saying bye-bye to the world. Do you understand that? You're saying bye-bye to the world and its intelligence. So you find out that you're going to hate your life on earth because the world is going to be taunting you left, right, center. You see what I mean? But that endurance, that endurance to continue carrying your cross daily, that's what this sermon is about. That is the worship of the Most High. For the Father seeks those who worship Him in spirit, for the Father seeks those who worship Him in spirit and in truth. He's not interested in any other kind of worship. So you can deceive yourself all you like. He's only interested in the worship of what? The Spirit. That's following the Spirit. Following the Holy Ghost. That's why he's interested. If you are not following the Holy Ghost, truthfully, you are not worshipping the Father. So what's the definition of worship of the Father? Denying your flesh to follow the Holy Ghost wholeheartedly and truthfully. So if you're not doing that, you're not worshipping the Father. That's why the Father pours out His Spirit on whoever sinner is going to ask for the Spirit. He pours it out because He's no longer judging you for your sins. 
So wonder why this gives back to a lot of deception. The spirit can come upon any sinner that asks honestly from the heart. For them to start following the spirit. Why do you think dry bones are going to rise again? They're dead. Why do you think they're going to rise again? They're going to rise by the spirit of the Father, following the spirit. So the worst sinner can follow the spirit, can follow the spirit out to that land of destination, no sin. So we ain't here to judge you, but it's like a judgment. Because we're telling you that what you're doing is wrong. We're here to convict you of right or wrong. You <laughs> see? We're here to tell you that even us, we do wrong things as well. The only difference is that we don't desire it. And you might be desiring us. So you have to know that the Father is going to save you from that with the Spirit. Some might say with the Spirit. That's why if you do not have the Holy Ghost, what do you want me to expect from you? See? I told you the message to teach you the Word. But if you turn away from the Word, I'm going to teach you what does the Scripture say? It says you're damned already. So why should I come and tell you something else other than scriptures? Doesn't the scripture say that for rejecting this word, which if you hear, you're going to have faith, have belief, and receive the spirit. If you reject this word, doesn't the scripture say you're damned already? So does that make me the judge then? Somebody say the worship of the Father is following the spirit truthfully. Now let's read that. Turn with me to the book of St. John Gospel, chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. It reads, But the hour cometh, and now is. You can read that like the time, the period is coming and has already begun. Right? It begins with Yahushua Mashiach Nazir. You can understand it like that. When the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship Him. This could not be possible except the Master died. For the Master does not die and ascend to heaven and ask the Father to send the Holy Ghost down, right? Without the Holy Ghost, only few chosen people can worship the Father in spirit and truth. Those whose hearts are pleasant to the Father, the rest are like castaway sinners, not even welcome to the presence of Elohim for thousands of generations. You see? For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. Elohim is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So you're not worshiping Elohim with your flesh. Your flesh is being denied, subdued. If your flesh is not being denied, it's an obstruction to the spirit. The flesh wages war against the spirit because it desires things that are contrary to the spirit. Do you understand that? Think of all the things the flesh desires. It wants to have fun. But it wants to have fun, whereas Satan and his crew are out in the world destroying souls. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, why is it, why does he want to have fun so much and miss the evil? Why? Do you understand what I mean? <laughs> Have you, have, you, have you contemplated that? Why does he want to have some fun so much and miss the evil going on? Who does the flesh, does your flesh, my flesh, who does the flesh expect to take care of Satan and his children? Who? Who should oppose Satan and his children? You want, your flesh wants Christ to come down and do it again. He wants the Father to come and do it again. See, it's not possible. 
Because the Father could really come inside you to do it through you. <laughs> See what I'm saying? So as a believer, if you want to enjoy so much, you're stopping the Father from doing it through you. So the Father has to say, well, I have to go somewhere else to go and do it. Because, trust me, the only thing the Father can do, the only thing the Father can do from where he's sitting is click his fingers or stand up from his seat. Boy, girl, when he clicks his fingers or when he stands up from his seat, the whole earth is destroyed. So, whilst you're busy praying for the Father to come by himself, it's destruction you're praying for. <laughs> it's destruction you're praying for. You're not doing the assignment. You see what I'm saying? Some of you think, uh, oh, it's not just, it's destruction you're praying for. For the only way this world can be saved, or the only way the people in this world can be saved is through you, the believer, through I, the believer. Do you understand that? Yeah. Some people are too rich and they believe that Elohim should come and talk to them. Actually, talk to them through so so so, through somebody in prison, or through somebody that is a dust of the earth, through a beggar, through whatever. Why should he come and speak to them through that? But they are so stupid. They haven't got time to believe and surrender their hearts and ask for the spirit of the elite to come in. If they could do that, he would come into them. You see what I mean? So they ain't got time to surrender to him. And those people have time to surrender to him. And they expect the creator to come and visit them. Instead of visiting those people. They believe in the flesh. And by that they obstruct the father. From doing what he wants to do at night. And they believe that the father should come and speak to them. Because they have money. See the father is a respecter of persons. See what I'm saying? And this is a problem from ancient to days. We we'll have school priests. We we'll have priests that went to school, but they will all be taught the same kind of thing that stops the freedom of the father in a particular context. So the father is always going to use a priest or a prophet that is not even learned. Somebody to look down at but it's humble to the Father. He's always going to use that person to do his work. Because the rest are just cold. They are not spiritually emancipated on following the Father. See what I mean? So it's not saying the Father is the author of chaos. No. It's just if you do not understand that you should be following the Spirit of the Father, then you're restricting the father. The father is going to look for somebody that understands. Can even be a little child. The father will use that little child to do what he's going to do. That's how it goes. And you find out that you'll be fighting the father. Because you'll be looking for a right process. Oh, this thing should not be done like this. This person should go to this school first, graduate here, and this, that, 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 that. I think the father cares about any of that. When did the father set that up? Wait. Which school did the apostles go to? Which Bible school did they go to? So when did the Father change? I'm asking you, when did He change? You saw clearly that they were chosen spiritually. For if somebody comes and says, follow me, <laughs> and you just stand up and follow the person, that's a spiritual movement. First and foremost, that person can, why is that person telling you? to follow them. You see, you don't know them. But this is a spiritual call. The person is selecting based on the spirit in the heart. And the spirit that is in the heart already knows the spirit of this person. He's not a rebel to the spirit of this person. Except one, which is that of Judas. You see what I'm saying? Who was called for an example. And surely, because he was called for an example, he was also going to answer the call. You see what I'm saying? So if I go to a tax collector person's house and I say, follow me. The tax collector is following me because he something moves him inside. You see? It's a spiritual call. So he called them because their spirits were ready. 
but their flesh will not try to even saw Apostle Kefa saying, oh, get away from me, I'm a sinner. I'm not what you see, what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. So he didn't call them because their flesh was ready. So I don't know why some of you believe that the Holy Ghost then should come and enter inside you because you are now holy, because you're perfect. But the Holy Ghost is coming inside you to make you holy, to make you perfect. So therefore it makes sense that evil comes inside you when you're in your worst state ever. But some people just want to believe that this person is with the Holy Ghost. The person must be like this, must be like that, must be like that. These are people that are so fleshy. They do not understand the worship of the Creator. And they are in danger of fighting the Master and crucifying the Master again, over and over again. Because they are not searching for truth either. If they are searching for truth, they will know who the other person is. So because they're searching for some outward appearance, they cannot know who the other person is because they'll be busy watching the process. And when the process is complete, it's time for their destruction. They think when the process is complete, that now they can now come inside. You see what I'm saying? But when the process is complete, it's time for destruction for all those who hated the truth. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. For they see him not. You see, they're looking for what they can see to convince them. <laughs> you see that? They're looking for their own standards of conviction instead of the truth. So when you, my friend, cannot receive the spirit of truth, how then are you going to worship the, ma the Father? in spirit and in truth. How then? When you cannot identify the truth, how is that possible? You're a foolish virgin. You're just going to follow the crowd. You're going to be hearing the nice word, feeling good. But it is bound to cease when persecution comes. Because you have no root in you. Because there's no Holy Ghost in you which you're following. There's no recreation taking place inside you. You believe that Elohim is an idol. Elohim is not an idol that you just go to your and worship. Some of you like to pay your tithe, go to church, try your best, and let that be the worship of Elohim. But I'm here to tell you, nay, nay, that's the worship of idols. Wonder why many of you are worshiping idols. Many of you have images in your chambers. Wonder why? Because that's what you like. You like to come and serve Elohim, and that is Elohim, right? Now you want to be yourself, and you want to go and do your own thing. But sorry to disappoint you. The worship of Elohim is following the spirit of truth in order to renew your mind and transform your character so that it can be good and good only in every department. That's the worship of Elohim. Do you understand that? So therefore, if you have no desire to transform your character so that it can be good, you, my friend, and your creator are rivals. So you can go to church, you can even give him millions. Yes, you can do everything. This is not going to help you. There was a man that came to Christ and said, all this I've observed, all these commandments I've observed, but it was still empty inside. And Christ told him, sell all you have and follow me. And you have treasures in heaven. And he could not and he cried. <laughs> See, the price is too much. <laughs> Do you understand? He said the price is too much. So he turned back. Yet he was observing laws. So if observing laws and doing all these things was going to get people to heaven, why couldn't he be guaranteed heaven? Did you see the master say, no, but you're guilty of this. No, but you're guilty of that. No, you're guilty of this. No. The master just told him, you're guilty of wanting, trusting in your wealth. That means if we take out all this wealth from you right now, right? 
Yes, he loves Elohim. Yes, he loves him. But if we take away all this world right now, how are you going to follow him? How are you going to do all those things that you're saying that you are done? You see, it is very easy for a rich person if he decides to practice morality, to practice morality because wealth is power. But if you take the wealth away from him like he did with Job, it takes something else. It takes him to love the spirit of truth for him to what? Stay worshipping Elohim. See? So if he clearly took all these things from this man, he was going to cost Elohim. <laughs> See what I'm saying? So he couldn't give it up. And the master only asked for these things only when it is the problem. If it wasn't a problem, the master would ask it. He didn't ask it of Zacchaeus because that wasn't a problem. And if he asked it of Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus was going to give it. <laughs> True or false? Exactly. Zacchaeus has already given things back without the master asking him. <laughs> See what I'm saying? And the master has known of all his works already before the master says, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house today. You see? The master said, this man is forgiven. He didn't say sell all your things. Because Zacchaeus was not trusting riches. He has learned to share. He has learned to be one with his brethren. He has learned to have a loving heart. He has learned to seek Elohim first. I mean, he was looking for Christ so much that he had to climb just to see him. See, that's how passionate he was for Christ. So he would have been listening to his teachings and trying to do what Christ is saying. So if Christ told him, sell it, he would just sell it all. So you see? Christ only asked when that was the problem. And if you have any confidence in outward appearance, outward riches, you have a problem like that same person. You either have to learn how not to trust in those things or you have to give them up. It's still the same story today. Somebody say, you either have to learn how not to trust in those things or you have to give them up in order to learn. So if you cannot learn and those things are oppositions to you learning, then you have to give them up. Is, this, is there a truth? For the context has never changed till today. Many rich people to enter into heaven will have to give up their wealth and trust that the Father will take care of them and give them their daily needs for them to learn because with their wealth when they are learning the pride is an obstruction because they trust in riches that's why the master also said it is easier for the camel to go through the eye of a needle than for the rich man to get into the kingdom of heaven those who trust the riches to get into the kingdom of heaven Possible for those who trust the riches have magnified their flesh, and their flesh is an opposition to the spirit doing work in them. So, even if Elohim was merciful and sent the spirit, the spirit will leave because of the grieving the spirit. Somebody say the worship of Elohim. Turn with me to the book of St. John Gospel. Chapter 14, I'm going to be reading from verse 15 to 19. It reads, I'm going to be reading from verse 16 to 19. It reads, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not that makes a lot of sense because the world is eternally minded they believe only what they see so you see they don't believe a spirit coming inside them and stuff like that there you go so they don't believe the spirit of truth because they see him not in the way they would like to see him. Exactly. Do you see what I'm saying? Neither knoweth him, 
but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. This is going to be in you. I have to stress that because there's a theology from some sect that believe that oh that this comforter was changed in the Bible and that this one was meant to be Muhammad. <laughs> some Muslim theology says that actual rivals they want they make so much effort to try to say that Christ was a prophet and that he spoke of Muhammad which is not the case. See? For this, I think, whoever set up this agenda, for this, they put Christ in the Quran. <laughs> you understand exactly? But how can you call someone a prophet and you don't believe that he's the son of God? So why are you testifying about a false prophet? See? So there was a grand agenda to use Islam to steal Christians. There is a grand agenda to use Islam and still Christian. It was well calculated. So it's like a rival faith to steal Christian's faith. So you have to be very careful. You have to be very careful with Islam. You can see that. And it shall be in you. And you can see in the scriptures, the apostles received the Holy Ghost to believe such an agenda. You don't believe that the apostles, the apostles, because they happen. That there was a Pentecost day where the Spirit came and entered inside the apostles and entered inside. The you don't believe that. You don't believe that I received the Holy Ghost. You don't believe that, right? Exactly. So be careful with all these agendas coming up. Good. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, verse 19 says, Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. See? Because Christ lives, you live. Without Christ being alive, I receive the Holy Ghost. <laughs> see what I'm saying? Exactly. So therefore, all those who come about fighting the faith, they deceive themselves. Because you see, from when I received the Holy Ghost, I saw all the testimony necessary for my faith. So why are you challenging me? Are you, did I make it up? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Exactly. So why are you arriving at me? You clearly see that I see the Father. You clearly see that I see the Son through His Spirit. You clearly see that. So why are you arriving at me? You know what I'm speaking is given to me. I didn't go to school to learn it. You know that, so why are you right with me? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? There you go. If you can't pick on bones, you can chew. Stop picking on bones, you can chew. Seriously. With all the theologies you all in hell have cooked up going on, to just be praying at Christians, praying at believers. Believers, watch and pray that you fall not into temptation. There are lots of theology to make you disbelieve what Christ told you to do. I've told you, I told you last summer that Satan's new agenda is to make you a liar. That's his only agenda. To make you a liar. When you're a liar, the truth in you cannot abide together. So the Holy Ghost is gone. See that? So that's his grand scheme. So be careful. So because he leaves, he has the final say. You might be inferior to the world due to betrayals and everything. Financially and stuff like that. The world is going to oppress you. Fear not, for Christ has overcome the world. He has the final say on how things are going to end. And also, be ready for his final say can be, come home. <laughs> I like being very honest. <laughs> See what I'm saying? But some people just believe that when his final says come home, that it means this, oh, it means that he is it means that it means he cannot do it, or it means that, that, that. It means that it is, they just don't want to get it. <laughs> they don't just want to get it. That his final say can be come home. But even when he says come home, it's for the glory of the kingdom. When he 
old Stephen come home is for the glory of the kingdom. It's for believers to be earned on being faithful to the dead. If Stephen was not going to be faithful to the dead, he probably wouldn't have told him to come home. It's what I'm saying. Exactly. When he told James, come home, he used to also tell us that in the same situation, I can tell you to come home. And in the same situation, I can tell you, get out of here. You see? So therefore, James, in the same situation, was called home. Kephas, in the same situation, was like, nah, Satan, you can't have him. The prison, everything, got broken for Kephas because he was the one Christ made the leader. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. Everywhere was broken for him. You see, he was never going to die till his appointed time. So why don't we say, I shall not die, but live. What we mean? It doesn't mean we shall not physically die. It means we will not die before our time. Somebody say, I shall not So you can click clearly say this, I shall not die before my time, before my appointed time by Christ. Because when you die before your appointed time by Christ, it's because you strayed from the track. Somebody say straight from the track. Some of the lies of Satan made you sift, sifted you out of the way. You see, that's Satan, a snake, sift, sift. See what I mean? Whereas the track is straight. So that you die before your time doesn't mean the master will clearly will take you to heaven. That's not what it means. That's why you shouldn't be scared of all these things. It just means there are much things the master wanted to do with you, but you made a decision against the master. But he forgives you for your weaknesses. But now he has to do those things through something else. So somebody say, I shall not die before the time appointed to me by the master. And when the time appointed to be my master come, I shall not cower. Yet I shall be happy to go and meet my master like Stephen went to meet my master. Believers have to learn to understand the worship of Yahushua and the worship of Elohim, which is still the same thing. See what I'm saying? So imagine if Yahushua listened to Kephas and cowered and said, Okay, I will not die. After I know what they are going to do, I will not go to Jerusalem. See, after he knew, <laughs> someone said, after he knew what was going to happen, he just said it, so he can decide not to go, so it doesn't happen. Imagine that if he cowered, all of a sudden, for the first time in history, he will become a sinner. Because he has vowed to his Elohim, he has vowed to his father, and has refused to keep the vow, that is a sin. So for the first time, he will become a sinner. For the Father never forced him to come on the earth. He accepted to go. He accepted the will of the Father. For he and the Father of the same will. He saw what the Father saw. And he accepted. And he came. Then after coming, he decides to cower. See? What does he take the Father for? So all these things the Father did, coming into Mary, doing everything, making sure that he's born and everything, protecting him, just fine, exactly, see? All of a sudden he has become a sinner. So that's why he had to rebuke Satan. Satan will try to make a coward. See what I'm saying? That's what we call cowardice. But what do the world call coward now? If you're trying to practice what the Creator tells you to practice, then what, what Christ tells you to practice, the world calls Christ a coward. They call him many names. And guess what? They are all abominable. They are all cowards, living like cowards, abominable. Just wanting pleasure and pleasure and pleasure. Boasting in pleasures of the flesh. That's what makes them there. Can you imagine? Rolling with the thoughts and intelligence of evil spirits is what makes them the man. Committing murder, causing chaos, poisoning minds, making money, and give, having their pleasure is what makes them the man. But doing the will of the Father, which is to bring truth upon this earth, is what they claim is a coward. Is who they claim is a coward. Somebody say, wow. Wow. 
astonishing in the judgment day we shall see whether it is to fear Satan in the judgment day we shall see whether it is to fear Satan that is a coward or whether it is to fear the creator that is a coward people who are afraid of Satan because they are afraid of Satan they do all their foolish fleshly lust cowards and because of that they don't even fear the creator anymore so they go about fighting the servants of the creator claiming to be the man but they don't fight Satan they just follow Satan he breaks them like he breaks them like nobody, nobody's business and they are broken and they believe that they are not a coward instead they come trying to break us whereas the word of Eloi is unbreakable how can you break he with the Holy Ghost are you sick the Holy Ghost is the authority of the earth do you understand so how can you kind of madness do you think of when you think of breaking someone with the Holy Ghost what kind of madness is that except the person is not ready to die Look into my eyes, do I look like I'm not ready to die? For that is the only way you can break someone. Because if somebody's not ready to die, they're going to cower from following the Spirit, which is the true worship of the Father. So you see these cows calling us cows, and they expect us to care. They expect us to want to boast on the flesh like them, to claim that we are the man based on the flesh terms. I am the man because I carry the word of the king and I'm proud of my king. Right? And of the church everywhere I go. And so if you're not ready to obey the word that comes out of my mouth as law, as the word of the king, even though I sound arrogant to you, because you have to obey these words I speak, if you're not ready, you my friend are coward and you love death. That's what makes a coward. You hate immortal life and you love death and you don't think you're a coward. People who commit suicides are cowards. So spiritual suicide which you are committing makes you a coward. And there's nothing that can make you a man in front of my eyes. No matter the boasting in the flesh that you continue to boast. Nothing. Just like there's nothing I can do to be a man in front of your sight. Because you see, what it takes to be a man is to be a booster in the flesh. You see what I mean? So there you go. So I'm even trying to look at you. But I don't know why you still keep stalking, hunting, and rebuking you. I'm sure so. That's what's wrong with all these cowards. They are rich, they have some millions in the bank account. They think that you should compromise Elohim because of their riches. And you look at them and say, you're rich. So because you're rich, I should forget about the truth and become a liar with you. I rebuke you, Yahushua Mashiach. I rebuke you and your riches which I have not desired. I have not asked you for these riches. So I don't know why you're flaunting it. Do you understand what I mean? <laughs> exactly. So why not gonna give it to the people that are looking for it? They are sick, they are cowards. I don't care how many millions of fans glorify you. And they call you names. And they glorify you and you go and you say, Oh, you're the man. You ain't no man to me. When you have no truth. When you're a liar from the pit of hell. When you go about doing evil in the secret. The amount of things most of these glorified fools whisper in the secret when they have the tongues. Do they have access to the tons to a believer? Oh my days. These are the scums of the earth. These are worshippers of Satan in secret. And then they come out claiming to be something. And that wonder why they hate us so much, even if we have nothing. They hate us just for having the Holy Ghost. Have you have you thought about that? They will throw away millions of money just to keep you poor just to make sure you are not in the flesh so that you can continue boasting in the flesh why? you don't like the spirit inside you ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake says the master somebody say the worship of Elohim puts you in enmity with the world so therefore if you are afraid of the world 
I'm sorry you're not worshiping Elohim. For how can you be a friend of someone who mocks your master? How can you be a friend of someone who spits on Christ? How can you kiss the lips that spits on Christ? How? How is it possible? Please explain to me how it is possible without you being a hypocrite. Or without you being totally ignorant. See what I'm saying? Somebody say the worship of Elohim. It has nothing to do with the church you go to. I can visit any church I want to visit. But I have my church. This is my church. Yahushua's temple. You see what I'm saying? Yahushua's Ekar. Just like um, if you wanted to visit my church, you can visit my church. But if you're not happy with my principle, I don't know why you're coming. You're, you're not invited, except you love the principle. <laughs> Do you understand what I mean? There you go. Just like if I don't like your principle, I shouldn't really be coming to visit your church. See what I'm saying? So there you go. So you can call churches the worship of Elohim. Oh, you didn't come to church this Sunday. Oh, you didn't come to church this Saturday. Oh, you didn't come to church. That has nothing to do with the worship of Elohim. The worship of Elohim is following the Holy Ghost truthfully. Following the Holy Ghost truthfully can say, oh, let's go and visit this brethren so so and so place and tell him so so and so what. Oh, let's go and hear what's happening here. Let's go and check out this church. You see? The worship of Elohim can do that in the moment. He who is born of the Spirit knoweth not where he is going to. See what I'm saying? Knoweth not where things are even coming from. <laughs> exactly. He's just following the Spirit. Truthfully. See what I'm saying? So I want you to understand that. So if a believer is loved by the world, the believer is simply not truthful. Just like the Master said, let's read that for you. Turn with me to the book of St. Luke Gospel, chapter 6. I'm going to read verse 26. It reads, Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. Who are these all men? All canal minded men. <laughs> Somebody say, All canal minded men. People who love the flesh, when they shall speak well of you, you see, they love the things that you're showing off. <laughs> you see? So they speak well of you. The master is saying, Woe to you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. See, so you're a false prophet. That's why they love you. For if you aren't a false prophet, it's not possible for them to love you. They cannot receive the spirit of truth. Impossible. The world loves sin so much that they need to receive instructions from hell to make you a sinner. So they'll be fighting you everywhere they can. You don't have to do anything. You see? So that doesn't mean you're going to be bad now. No, 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 no. <laughs> if you're bad, they'll probably speak well of you. <laughs> do you understand what I mean? He, the master was good. Okay, what did the master do? He was healing people. He was doing good. Yet they couldn't speak well of him. So what are you doing that's making them speak well of you? See? So some people will say, if they, if they speak well of you, oh, so that's going to be bad. So that they'll speak well of us. No. <laughs> you just have to keep practicing, following the master, being good. And they will never speak well of you. They will cook up accusations. They will set you up. They will do all manner of things just to tarnish your image. You see? Because you are trying to follow the master. Haven't you heard? Those who are trying to do well by Christ shall suffer persecution. So they didn't suffer persecution because they are trying to be bad. They suffer persecution for they are trying to do well by Christ. The world is like, how dare you? <laughs> Do you see what I mean? So they receive instructions from hell and they just come. 
and you can you in this in this section where they're trying to talk you can't say let's play well you can take them to their kings and when their kings say they're allowed to continue doing what they're doing it's time for you to fight somebody says it's time for you to fight it's time for you to turn the game back on them repeat after me it's time for you to turn the table back on them and say okay you believe that it is okay to do those things right so now you start doing it to them if not you'll be able to breed you know what I mean so when you speak 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 it's time for example <laughs> you see what I'm saying because they are hypocrites they are people who are so malicious but after their maliciousness they need to attack you so they use maybe a civility a civil rule to come to attack you and expect that you should be alright yet every time they're being malicious so therefore they're sending negative energy to you because they never stop being malicious that's the world so if they were to speak well of you you my friend you're a liar from the pit of hell for only your brethren should be able to speak well of you say, oh oh Timothy is a good person he followed me there he followed me here he did this he loves me he has passion for Christ because he said by their fruits by your fellow brethren you should know their fruits so you can speak well of your brethren if they are doing the fruits of the kingdom because you can know that see so you should only speak in words will come from the world because the world never speaks well of Christ instead the world invents a Christ that is a sinner the world invents a Christ that is a sinner the world hates Christ because he comes to tell them that their deeds are evil though he comes to call them to repentance but he comes to tell them that their deeds are evil the world hates Christ because he tells them that their deeds are evil and if you are trying to be like Christ you convince them as well with the Holy Ghost to you that their deeds are evil so why is their party with these evil deeds they don't want to part with it how is it possible for them to love you how I'm asking you how is it possible you are against what they love they love evil they love sin they, they want to change the word of the master to permit sin they bow down to a beast which is homosexuality right good this is their key sin the men and the women they bow down to a man in place of God which is the worship of the beast right they do this which is why homosexuality is their top sin their top sin and they are looking for how they can change the word of Christ how they can make even Christians to worship Elohim like that <laughs> a man in place of Elohim you see so therefore when Christ is telling them that they need to repent from all the sins there is rivalry and they will continue to try to see if they can make him bow down to a man in place of Elohim and this give back to war serious war to the death they, they don't play with this they don't play with this this give back to serious war for this we are all polluted now as believers are polluted they look for things they get worse and worse they look for how they might sell it to us over and over again so anybody not ready to die I'm sorry and they broke many believers as well I don't need to tell you Daniel told me that that the Antichrist shall destroy many mighty people of Elohim he shall destroy them wonderfully it's not possible for him to destroy you if you did not abolish the law but like I told you in the last sermon, his sin, homosexuality, is inside the law. So therefore, because his sin is inside the law, guess what? All those who do not abolish the law are going to wage war against him. They are going to identify him. So therefore, he gets upset because he uses the abuse of grace to give birth to homosexuality. So he's going to get upset with them and he's going to come at them. He's going to come at us. You see what I'm saying? So you see? So they hate you because you're not down with their beast worship. You see what I'm saying? Homosexuality is death 
the law clearly told you that and even if the law right even if the law you claim the law was abolished right Christ also told you that so let, let us visit this scene of the beast one more time Christ also clearly told you that now where did Christ tell you that Christ said you shall be betrayed by all those around you that's when you believe her and they shall deliver you to death let's read that let's read that um, turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 10 I'm going to read from verse 17 all the way down to where we stopped it reads but beware let's start from verse 16 Matthew chapter 10 from verse 16 behold I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves but beware of men for they will deliver you up to the councils and they will scourge you in their synagogues and ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake for a testimony against them and the gentiles but when they deliver you up take no thought how or what ye shall speak for it shall be given you in the same hour what ye shall speak for it is not ye that speak but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you and the brother shall deliver up the brother to death somebody say the brother shall deliver up the brother to death somebody say to what to death the master is life mind you he's saying to death and the father the child that means the father will deliver the child to death and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death that's if they don't endure their cross they will revenge on those who deliver them to death <laughs> exactly right and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake but he that endureth the end shall be saved so I'm asking you are they delivering you to physical death you don't want to do you see them trying to kill you physically? They are delivering me up to death. But I can tell you, they're not delivering me up to kill me physically. Oh, I would have been so happy. By now I would have died. Or I would have lived, right? By now I would have died and I would have gone home. And I would be sleeping in my paradise. Waiting for the rapture. Right? Exactly. That's not what they are delivering you up to. They shall deliver you up to spiritual death. And if you look at what they're delivering up to, it's called homosexuality. So that is where the master calls it death. And you cannot rival that. Except you see them delivering it to fiscal debt. I don't see them delivering it to fiscal debt. All I hear them trying to chant is homosexuality. Calling the father a homosexual, <laughs> cursing the son, calling us homosexual, calling us names, calling us all manner of names. That's all they do around us, two for seven. <laughs> they don't rest so you see so homosexuality is death and it's the worship of the beast and the world does that so they will hate the believer for the believer doesn't do that the believer doesn't bow down to the man the believer bows down and worships Elohim and what's the worship of Elohim? the transformation of your character from the Holy Ghost, that's with the Holy Ghost, with the power of the Holy Ghost, the transformation of your character, that is the worship of Elohim. So you see? So then, your sin cannot be death, and you claim you're saving life. For the Master say, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. You say, I'm the death. But He can deliver you from death. If you listen to the word, believe that you are not supposed to be doing these things and ask for help and receive the spirit as it is written all sins shall be forgiven men and blasphemies wherein they've sinned but as long as you want to continue doing these things you are not my brethren i do not know you somebody said i do not know you i rebuke you everybody that comes with a theology that sin is not to be repented from it's cost be it an angel let them be a cost 
For the master delivers from all sins. So the worship of the Creator is following the Spirit, transforming your character to get to a place where you manifest the Son's image. If you did not get anything, I hope you got that. For that's what this whole message is about. So it's not your stupid philosophies that you to set up. That's not it. It's that simple. That's the only thing Creator six. So brethren, if we will not exhibit our spiritual gifts, we can only fold our arms and watch the hypocrites and the world exhibit their gifts of the flesh which is going to walk our flesh and make it want, want, want and they want to be like them but if we will exhibit our spiritual gifts which is the only thing worth dying for to be honest then we'll have something to watch something to relax to good movies to relax to music to listen to and focus on the master see other than that the whole place is going to be dark so all those who are blessed with talents cannot throw their talent away so when you throw your talent away what you're saying is that may darkness continue so the devil is going to fight you he's going to fight you to the death he's going to bring that stupid beast worship but he must be ready to die to resist him you know that you have the grace to resist him to the death understand he must keep bringing out your talents keep bringing it out let them keep oppressing you keep bringing it out the master is with you keep bringing it out understand if not all you're gonna do is be watching the hypocrites and watching the world the hypocrites are the ones who bow down to the beast and claim that it is christ it is christ worship in the name of jesus every knee shall bow so, so in the name of Jesus, they bow down to a man and they claim that it is what? The worship of the Father. And then the beast gets out of their way and rewards them with riches and they are happy. Daniel told you all about this. I will read that before I close. So please, those of you that have gifts, exhibit it. If not, you meet the judgment of them guy in the parable of talent who did not exhibit his talent. So to avoid the destruction of the Antichrist, a saint must bear and love and even boast in their infirmities, boast in their chastisement, the things they're suffering for the faith. You see what I'm saying? They should endure that persecution for that is what, what makes them even ready for the master so if you had no persecutions i mean hello you're in this world and you're serving christ and they hate him this much and you have no persecution shows the person that took the persecution for you because it must be a firstborn that helps you out but if, if a firstborn did not help you out you have to suffer the persecution. <laughs> you understand what I mean? My firstborn can help you out. You see what I'm saying? That's not good. If your firstborn is finished helping themselves, they can help you out. But if they don't help you out, sorry, you have to suffer that persecution. But when the firstborn has been strengthened by Christ, he's going to love his fellow brethren and they'll gather and they'll yeah, exactly do. You'll be strong enough to fight together. You get what I mean? So please suffer your persecution. Embracing your persecution is also part of the worship of Elohim. Understood? The world doesn't love Elohim, it's no secret. So therefore, there is their hatred for you if you're a believer. There's the fight you're fighting with them if you're a believer. Exactly. Understood? So the spirit does the leadership and the spirit is speaking.
So therefore, when people are trying to afflict your soul, which is what the world is going to do, afflict your soul, you set up many things to afflict your soul. The Spirit gives you something to do. Sometimes it tells you, be quiet, ignore them. Intentionally ignore them, and you must ignore them. You can try to be a nice girl or a nice guy by not ignoring them. Someone is following your family or spirit, intentionally ignore them. See what I'm saying? Sometimes the spirit will rebuke them with the word of Elohim. Sometimes the spirit will just show them what they've done. So it's depending on what the spirit says to them. So the spirit tells you to leave it alone, you have to leave it alone. <laughs> you have to be able to be following the spirit to understand this. So the spirit does speak and it does make war. So you have to be ready to make war too. You can't be a nice person. In war, if you, niceness can kill you. In war, niceness can kill you. And niceness is when the spirit is telling you exactly what to do. You know it is in alignment with the word. You've tried the spirit to the word and it's in alignment to the word. You don't want to do it. <laughs> that makes your whole journey messy. You understand what I mean? So the spirit as a leader is going to counsel you on what to do. And you have to do this things. You have to pray to be able to do this thing the way the Spirit wants you to do it. Do you understand that? If not, you are worshipping Elohim. For you're meant to be following the Spirit daily, carrying your cross daily, praying daily. And for your weakness, somebody say for your weakness, you see everything I've told you? It could get very unbearable. The cross can be unbearable. Christ carried his cross and he fell how many times before he made it to before he made it to cover, before he made it to the place of bones. Golgotha. How many times did he fall? Yeah. So you see, for your weakness there is grace. For you to stand up and continue your race. You see? So even for Christ's weakness, there was grace for someone to come and help him carry his cross. You see what I'm saying? The Father just wanted it that way. If not, the Father can still send him straight to carry the cross. Don't forget that. <laughs> exactly. I'm just trying to tell you, the Father just wanted it that way. Understood? Okay. So for Christ's weakness, when he fell, there was somebody to help him carry the cross all the way. But you see, the race had continued till he completed everything the Father told him to do. And that's how you must run your race. So for your weakness, there is grace. But what kind of fool is weak every time? Every minute you want to be weak. You want to be weak today, you want to be weak tomorrow, you want to be weak. Damn! What kind of worship of Elohim does not have long suffering? The spirit of Elohim has long suffering. Endurance. And yet you have the spirit. And we can't see your long suffering. We can't see your endurance. Instead, due to complain, you have not allowed yourself to be weak every day. You're doing the wrong thing, my friend. You're beginning to resurrect your flesh instead of sacrificing it. Wonder why you'd be scared of death? Exactly. You're having too much fun. You love your life on the earth, so therefore you want to leave. When death stares you at the face. True or false? But if you're sacrificing your flesh, you hate your life on earth. Because you see people for who they are, they hate Christ. And you want them saved. And they are so stubborn. They practice sorcery. They weary your soul. There's nothing that will make you love your life on this earth. The only thing that will keep you going is the fact that the Spirit is going to save who is going to save. It's going to establish something on this earth for those who love Elohim to come to that place. That's the only thing that's going to keep you going. That will be your strength. That will be your joy. You see what I'm saying? If not, you want to leave this earth. Even Apostle Paul told you, <laughs> Now you would rather leave this earth, but for our sake, you will continue. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So for your weakness, there is grace for you to continue your race. To do that good and acceptable thing the Father told you to do. 
So I hope you've understood the worship of Elohim. So that the Antichrist will not destroy them. People are about to read it before I close. So it's very important to understand what the worship of Elohim is. Following the Spirit, truth, food. Follow with me to the book of Daniel, chapter 8, verse 24. I'm going to read this and I'm going to close. This is what's going to happen to the people of Elohim. They love Elohim. Oh, oh, they love Elohim. But they do not follow him in spirit and in truth. They follow him like a crowd. They are people that they want to please the body of Christ. They want the so-called body of Christ. They want to please the church, even when the church is doing wrong. They don't want to speak that thing that the Holy Ghost is telling them to speak. It's too heavy for their mouth. They want to roll with everybody, so they keep quiet. And then guess what? They get destroyed. There's a mighty people of the mighty pastors, mighty bishops, destroyed by the Antichrist. For they became really just wanting to present. I've told you this in the sermon. We need to present perfect things with money. You want to present perfect things. You say, see else that is doing. This is the Lord's doing. This is the Lord's doing. They want to present success in a materialistic way. They want to present marriage in a materialistic way. Their wife might be wrong. And it's time for them to divorce this wife, but they want a perfect projection. I told you this in the last one, but I'm still telling you this. This is what helps the Antichrist to destroy you because you're not following the Spirit truthfully. If you're following the Spirit truthfully, people are meant to take you seriously, to be around you. If they don't take you seriously, they cannot be around you. Your word is from the Spirit. Let's read. Daniel chapter 8 verse 24 it reads and his power that was the Antichrist his power shall be mighty but not by his own power if you read Revelation Satan gave him power right not by his own power and he shall destroy wonderfully somebody say wonderfully do you know what wonderful destruction is I've just explained to you when I make you believe that in the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. And that this bowing is to bow down to a man in the place of Elohim. To accept blasphemy. <laughs> I have destroyed you wonderfully. And what will I use to destroy wonderfully? I tell you in the name of grace. Come on. There's grace now. There's grace. Okay, look at you, you're sinning. Are you, is this not sin? Exactly. So why not just do this one? There's grace. And you have money to glorify Elohim even more. See? And if you refuse, I bully you and I bully you. I say, where is your Elohim? Let him save you, let me see. Let him save you, let me see. And I'll send people after you and these people continue to be enchanting their homosexuality over and over again. They worship it day and night. I'll give them instructions to continue to invoke the spirit over and over. I'll slander your name. You shall speak blasphemy against the Most High. Just for this sin. Somebody say, You shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper <laughs> and practice. And shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. If you've never opened your ears before, please open your ears. Who did he prosper destroying? The mighty and the holy people. He has already destroyed the Gentiles. Don't forget, he destroyed the Gentiles. He shall destroy the mighty. Now, we're not talking about only two babies here. We're talking about the mighty holy people. Those people you're looking at. Mighty holy people. And destroy them wonderfully. They will believe this lie, this homosexual lie. 
Brethren, understand the worship of Elohim so that you don't accept the wrong worship as worship of Elohim. So you should be ready to die in the face of a blasphemer. Understood? Shalom al king and I hope you've understood this message that you should worship Elohim in spirit and in truth and may Elohim help us understand and continue to follow the spirit truthfully to the death till we see him again. In your wishes, never pray. Amen. Ah, See you next time, brethren. Enjoy the week. <laughs>